If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, rangers, forest workers, hunters, and other woods people, what is your scary experience in the woods that you still can't explain? A few years back, when I was around the age of 14 and my brother was 9, my dad, my little brother, and I all went out deer hunting in the afternoon right before sundown. While we were walking through the woods, before we even got started, my little brother tugged on my arm and asked me if I saw that. I said that it was probably his imagination and he let go of my arm. A few minutes later, I couldn't hear him walking behind us anymore, and turned around to find him gone. I quickly told my dad and we looked for him for, at the least, half an hour, when he walked over out of nowhere towards the both of us, he was covered in mud like he'd fallen somewhere. I worriedly asked where he'd gone and he just stared at me, telling me that he couldn't remember and thought that he had never left. He acted normally afterwards just as nothing had happened, I don't know if this is really scary to anyone else, but it shook my entire family, including myself, quite a bit. Kinda creepy thing happened to me when I was a student forester this summer. So, the forest I was working in was about 20 kilometers. From the nearest town which contained around 1,200 people and we usually set out for whatever task we have to do in the forest at around 7 a.m. So we are at the forest at around 7.30 a.m. and we are about 12 kilometers. Up the road when we turn a corner very slowly and see what I initially thought to be a weird looking bush or statue but it was in fact a person, sitting on a carved out stump on the side of the road, just sitting there. What really threw me off was the fact that this person had a parka on and a balaclava underneath it in the middle of summer. We drove by this person real slow and he lifted a hand to wave slowly as we drove past and it was just super creepy. Never saw them again after that but it did make going out on excursions a little more uneasy sometimes when alone. Not my story, but my younger sister's, early 20s. She was in Colorado last year and went hiking with her friend. The plan was to hike up the mountain, stop midway in camp, then finish the hike the next morning. They started their hike and stopped for camp midway. She said it started dumping rain that night which meant the top would most likely be snow. The next morning they continued their hike, but it started getting complicated. Her friend only wore Chaco sandals and not proper hiking boots as they didn't expect the snow. They stopped at a creek and were deciding if they wanted to turn back on account they weren't prepared properly when they heard a faint help me. They both stood still. They heard it again. They decided to follow up the creek to the woman's voice. They got to a clearing that was covered in snow and found a woman laying in it in basic athletic clothing, leggings, light pullover jacket, and athletic shoes. My sister said her legs were swollen, discolored and had nasty cuts on them. My sister asked her how long she had been out there and the woman said only a few hours. My sister was like okay we need to get you down this mountain. The woman was like no I need to go up the mountain that's where my car is parked. My sister was like, no, there is no driving access at the top of the mountain which was a sign that this woman was confused. They get her down the mountain and my sister just kept saying how confused this woman was. They get to the bottom and they find this woman's car. My sister couldn't get cell service to call 911 during this BTW. Anyways, my sister tells this woman she's going to drive her to the hospital but the woman is standing strong that she would just like to go back to her bed and breakfast. My sister takes her there while driving this woman's car. Once the woman is at the bed and breakfast she thanks them and goes in. My sister spoke to the owners and was like you have to call a medic, she is severely confused and not acting normal. They call a medic and transport her to a hospital. Turns out this woman is from Chicago, has low blood pressure and it was her first time ever hiking a mountain, she was also alone. She had passed out during her hike, then it dumped snow on her. She was hypothermic and only thought she'd been out for a few hours, she was out overnight in the dark, cold and alone. I couldn't imagine the terror she must have felt. Anyways, my sister went and saw her at the hospital and the woman thanked her for saving her life. They still lightly keep in touch. We have a camp that we visit during the hunting months and about every other weekend in between that. To get to our camp, you have to turn off of a major road onto a gravel road, drive about a mile, then turn onto another gravel road for about a half mile. It's set between a few other camps, plus some residents that live out there. It's quiet, for the most part. There are some coyotes and bobcats. Bobcats are the worst due to their terrible scream. It sounds like a woman crying for help. There has also been a black panther and wild dogs. 2013 we were at the camp for Thanksgiving. We hunted, fished, cooked, drank, all that good camp stuff. On night, we're sitting around a fire, swapping funny stories and just listening to the silence of the woods. As we're talking, we all hear, help me. At first, we thought it was a bobcat. We listened some more and heard it again. It was a man's voice yelling help me. Repeatedly. 
Now, our first instinct was to grab our guns. Second was to go towards the voice, but you never know what you will encounter in the woods. It was dark and cold. The hunters knew the area very well. We called the police, and explained everything to the responding officers. The weird part was that we never once heard it while the officers were with us. Not once. The officers left and we heard the man again, repeating help me. About half an hour later, the officers came back and we didn't hear any call for help. Again, silence. We all decided it was best to go inside our camp for the night. We never did find out anything. I've only been back to the camp once since then. Really freaked me out. I've lived in the Smokies most of my life. Anywhere I've lived in the Smokies, I've been completely surrounded by woods, naturally. One night at like 1 am I was sitting on my porch drinking a beer. If you haven't lived out here, during the summertime, nature is loud. It isn't quiet. Cicadas humming, frogs belching, etc. It's like the ultimate white noise. While I was drinking my beer, I had noticed that everything in the woods had gone quiet. Which is pretty easy to notice when you live here because that doesn't happen. Suddenly, I heard the most terrifying noise I had ever heard about, on, I think maybe a good 30 or 40 meters away from me. It was a loud, shrieking, literally blood-curdling scream like shrill. It sounded, non-human. It wasn't a mountain lion because I've heard them before, and they're rare in the area I live. I stood up, audibly said nope, and walked the fuck inside. That was the one and only time that ever happened. I still live in the same house, and still drink the same beer on the same porch. Not my story, but my dad's. When my dad was in his 20s, he was staying with my mom at a small cabin in the woods of Colorado. It was fairly remote, there was another cabin about a mile away in a campground maybe three miles down the valley, late one afternoon, he was out fishing on a nearby river by himself. As the light started fading, he decided to call it a day and head back to the cabin for dinner. As he was walking back through the woods, he got an eerie feeling that he was being watched, but he couldn't see anyone or anything. He kept walking back, and then suddenly he heard a stick break behind him. He stopped, looking back for the source of the sound, but still didn't see anything. He nervously kept walking back, a little quicker and then heard another stick break, whirls around and still, nothing. This happens like three or four times, but every time he stopped to listen and look, there was total silence and nothing else moving. By the time he finally made it back to the cabin, it was nearly dark. He never did find out what was following him, but whatever it was left him alone after that. His best guess was a mountain lion stalking him or something. Really unsettling though. We lived on the Hopi slash Navajo reservation growing up. My mom and I were feeding the horses very early in the morning before I went to school it was still almost completely dark out when we hear this low, dim homing noise. The horses start acting really nervous, ours included. Sweating, pacing, nostrils flared, eyes showing white the works. We feed them and walk out from the barn slash shack trying to figure out what's happened. We look up after scanning the horizon for anything, squinting as best as we could, and there is a black triangle-like thing hovering right over us. It was almost completely silent. It was perfectly over us so you couldn't see it unless you looked straight up and it felt like it was so close I could touch it. It was pretty damn large too like a long triangle. Smooth and black. Thinking back, it was actually quite impressive and beautiful. Mom mom grabbed me and ran back into the shed. This was before cell phones were really a thing so she just clutched me and told me not to make a sound. We waited for what felt like ages but was probably only two to three more minutes. The horses weren't even eating, they just paced the shed inside back and forth. Finally the horses started settling down to eat and my mom went outside. It was gone. We felt like we had the flu the rest of the day and I stayed home. We never told my dad. I think it was some sort of military aircraft since around the reservation there are quiet, Secret military setups but who knows. Couple good friends of mine fight fires and in WA state summers business is usually booming. This year a fair sized crew of about 10 of them are miles and miles deep into the Cascades doing dig lines. I'm talking like 60 miles away from anything, middle of nowhere. As they're hiking through they come to a clearing and there's two landed Black Hawk helicopters and about seven fully armed military personnel. They all point their rifles at the fire crew and demand to know what they are doing there. My friend tells them they're doing fire digs and they're scheduled to be up there. They are told to turn around and forget that they saw anything up there. My friend says but this is government work, we have to do this, this is our job. Military guy says not today, you're done, get the fuck out of here now. Some serious chronicle type shit. I've never wanted to know so badly about what the hell was going in out there. I've lived on the high desert for most of my life, 6000 above sea level if you're wondering. 
I was out riding my horse alone in the absolute middle of BFE in the Badlands, no trees, and hardly any brush to speak of so sounds carry a long way and there is nowhere to hide for long, when all of a sudden his ears perk up. I feel my skin start to crawl like we're being watched. My normally mellow gelding, starts to panic. I start to feel really dizzy, and my horse stumbles. I black out. I come to an hour or so later about three miles away from the inciting incident still on my horse. He is frothing with sweat and shaking all over. I'm still not sure what happened. I had plenty of water and snacks. It was 65-ish degrees and breezy, so I don't believe weather or dehydration slash hunger were a factor. I have never before or after had a fainting spell, and that was the most reliable, quiet horse I've ever owned. I now have a serious case of the heebie-jeebies again just thinking about it. Friend and I were hiking in the woods. He was at the camp and I went to check on things about half a mile away. Suddenly, as if someone flipped a switch, the woods became silent. No wind, no rustling leaves, no birds. Just the most eerie silence I've experienced. After a few minutes, it suddenly went back to normal forest noises. Thinking I must have had a seizure or temporary deafness or something I hurried back to camp, only to see friend standing there with a confused slash scared look on his face. I must have had a similar look because he immediately asked if I heard the silence. We tried to come up with an explanation, but absolute silence in the woods seems impossible. Even more so that it was so sudden. When I was six, my babysitter was this nice middle-aged lady and her equally nice husband. My twin brother and I were always at their house in the summer and we hung out with the couple's two grandkids, another boy and girl sibling set of similar ages. This was literally my happy place. This lady had the best movie collection for a six-year-old. It is where I saw the last unicorn for the first time, as well as the little mermaid, the great mouse detective, the first land before time, and the brave little toaster. And her husband was a phenomenal cook by a kid's standard. Every day was chicken nuggets and pizza day. They had kid-size four-wheelers, a pool, a huge kid's playhouse and jungle gym set up in the backyard. And they put on the best 4th of July show in the county for years. Six-year-old me was the happiest girl on the freaking planet. They were some of the wealthiest people in our area too. Neither one of them worked so I have no idea where the money came from but I didn't care. One day, midsummer, the two boys were being typical boys and the little girl and I thought they were being mean. In reality, the boys wanted to play war or something and the girls wanted to play wedding. Or something similarly stupid. Whatever. She and I were sad and we refused to play with the boys. Instead, we decided to go pick flowers that grew at the edge of the forest. We thought it was baby's breath but it was really just poison hemlock, seriously. Kids, right? So we are walking along the edge of this dense forest in the middle of Banjo country in southern Ohio. This was in 1990 so we weren't worried about stranger danger because we were just so far out in the country. The adults did worry about animals from time to time because the next county over has bears and mountain lions but us six-year-olds were fearless. We ended up walking onto the neighbor's property picking these flowers when we found a break in the tree line. It was an old, well-worn path leading into the woods. For whatever reason, i.e., we were dumb, she and I decided to ditch our flowers and take the path in the woods and see what it led to. The path itself was unremarkable. Well-worn but unmaintained as there were tree roots growing up through the path in places. We came upon a little bridge at one point. We were both a little confused about it because we had been told there were no creeks in our area yet here was a bridge. It wasn't a particularly old bridge either. But the creek bed under it was dry as a bone. Weird. We kept going because. Why not, I guess. I'm not sure how far we walked beyond the bridge but we ended up in a clearing with stones all around it in a circle. The clearing was big enough that there was a gap in the trees that allowed the sunlight in. And in the middle of the circle was a massive stone walled well. It was big enough that there were stairs built into the damn walls in a huge spiral. My little friend was mesmerized by the well. She found a rock and tossed it in. We never heard it hit the bottom. As we were searching for more rocks to throw in, I was rooting around in the brush by the bigger stones and actually looked at the big ones. These were not normal stones. Nope. I was a smart cookie, already reading at a third grade level the summer before first grade, something I loved to show off to anyone that would sit still for three seconds or more, so I could read the stupid stones. There were names and dates cut into rough hewn stone. We were in a graveyard. In the middle of the woods. Far away from our adults. I remember getting chills realizing that this. Moments later, my little friend got really quiet and poked me. She pointed to the edge of the clearing on the other side of the well. Thankfully, not the side that we had entered the graveyard on. My little heart would have exploded, I think. 
She was pointing at a dark shape standing just inside the woods facing us. We both stood up very slowly and stared at this dark shape. At some point, the little girl took my hand and tried to get me to leave but I couldn't move. The fear was paralyzing. It didn't move until the clouds covered the sun and our bright, inviting clearing became slightly shadowy. Then, the shape moved. It was an adult shape slash size thing wearing long dark robes with a hood over its face. We were stupid kids, but we weren't that fucking stupid. We both turned tail and ran as fast as our little legs allowed. My friend was faster than me because I was a chunker, a kid with a love of reading and movies and pizza is overweight, who would have think it? So she made it to the bridge first. I wasn't far behind her though. I looked back after we got over the bridge and that asshole was standing at the edge of the bridge. Just standing there. I screamed, pissed myself, and kept running. I tripped over a tree root in the path, ripping my pants and shredding my knee in the process. I scrambled up and kept running. We burst out of the trees like our hair was on fire, screaming and crying, and made a beeline for the girl's grandparents' house. Her grandfather was in the backyard planning something and came running when he heard us. We were absolutely hysterical and nothing could calm us down. We spent hours sobbing while the grandma and grandpa got us bathed and in clean clothes and tried to soothe us. The more they said there was no one in the woods, the more hysterical we became. It took both of us months before we'd even go onto the back deck again. Everyone was convinced we made up the story with our hyperactive imaginations but the adults humored us. The kids, not so much. The next summer, we were forced into the backyard for the annual 4th of July party. Tons of kids. They all knew our story and one of the teenage boys, a badass, don't cha know, called bullshit. He bullied us for hours until we told him where the path in the woods was. And then he made us go with him. K another incident of me pissing my pants. Yay. To my utter relief, when we got to where she and I both remembered the path being, there was nothing. No path. Just a very heavy growth of hemlock. He tried to wade through it and ended up with chiggers from neck to foot. And he got in a ton of trouble for dragging us kids down there once we got back. So she and I were relieved not to go back but from then on, all those kids thought we were stone cold liars. Fast forward 15 years later, 16 years after this all happened, my mom mentioned that the grandpa passed away a few months prior while I was off to school. I was 22 at that point and had mostly forgotten the events in the woods. I expressed my condolences and asked what happened. I mean, this guy was a friend of my mom's for 20 plus years. My mom started being evasive so I got curious and pressed her. She said that he had hung himself in their garage. Jesus. Wow, okay. That sucks. And then she told me the bad part. His granddaughter, my little friend, was the one that found his body. All around him were notebooks with crazy person writings that he had amassed over a very long time, some dating back to the early 70s apparently, detailing his dealings with demons and spirits and other crazy things. He had left notes for all of his loved ones. The note for his granddaughter was an apology for not protecting her from the demon at the well. And the note for his wife was an apology for leaving her as it was the only way to protect her and the other people he loved. It seems that the explanation for their wealth was deals struck with the demons. After a few decades of these deals, they had started coming to collect on the debts the old man owed and what they wanted was for him to kill his family in payment so he killed himself instead. It was the craziest thing I had ever heard but it made total fucking sense. Everyone wrote the guy off as having a serious mental health issue, they threw the journals away, buried him, and moved on. No investigations. Nothing. I can rationalize everything we saw and experienced as some kind of weird psychological reaction to picking hemlock. That wouldn't explain how both of us had the exact same delusion though. I know what I saw was real. I might not remember all the details nearly 30 years after the fact but I remember the fear. And I still have a scar on my knee that had never faded. I'm not afraid of the woods or the dark or anything. But I have a very healthy respect for the dead, and I don't with demon shit. In the immortal words of Ducky, nope, nope, nope. About 20 years ago I had just finished my degree and was bummed because I couldn't find a job. A former roommate slash good friend and I went on an overnight backpack trip near Burr Oak State Park in southeast Ohio. About 2 am we were awoken in our tent by the sound of dozens of horses being ridden all around us. We could hear muted conversation, harness jingling, hoofs clopping and we could feel it shaking the ground. We laid in our tent and the sound just kept on, like a whole convoy was passing right beside us. After a few minutes we unzipped the tent and the sounds immediately ceased and nothing was there. It was freaky. We were afraid they were going to ride over us it was so intense. I have no idea who or what it was but we're camped on a trail that had been used by John Morgan Hunt's Confederate raiders during the Civil War. 
Not a logical explanation but it was deafening there were so many horses. I can still hear men's voices murmuring as they rode by. Next morning not a single hoof print to be found. I was driving from Tucson to Denver in the middle of the night. Got tired, was pulling off and crawl in a sleeping bag in the desert far away from the two-lane blacktop I was on, Highway 666 BTW, it's since been renamed because everybody was stealing the signs. Anyway pull off the road, onto a dirt road and then a little further. Kind of hid the truck behind some vegetation and tossed down a sleeping bar and pad in the middle of pitch black huge star New Mexico night. No one around, no light, nothing at all. Visibility for miles. I'm completely fucking alone in pitch black nothing and getting wound down and my eyes are getting droopy. Then I hear it. It sounds goofy to say but it's the same Indian music you'd hear in old black and white westerns. Native music, voices and a drum. I literally think I'm dreaming and when it starts I'm fucking petrified because that noise just appearing out of nothing simply put ice in my veins. Relax a little and unfreeze, and try to be logical about what I'm hearing, which has no physical manifestation of its origin. So. Thinking logically. Now instead of pure panic. I could be on the reservation at this point. Perhaps it's coming from behind a previously unseen hill. I get up, look around. I don't see anything at all. It kind of comes and goes in volume doesn't seem to be coming from a direction. I have no clue. I looked for evidence and didn't find any. Crawled back in the bag because I'd been driving for hours, and they sang all night. Logic tells me it had to be a group of people I didn't see. But I looked, and there were no ancillary noises like talking or stopping or anything. Just that Indian drum. And the hiya hiya. What was originally terrifying became calming and I ended up sleeping fantastically. Later learned that was a terrible stretch of road for very bad things to happen, it sort of lived up to its 666 moniker for wrecks and bad shit occurring apparently. I was hiking through the remnants of a remote, long abandoned town in the surrounding area. To get to as far into the woods as I was, you had to cross fallen trees over a creek three times. I had just crossed the third bridge and was about five miles in and something blue caught my eye just ahead of me. There was a man, in his 60s at least, wearing blue satin pajamas, sitting in a tree. The closer I got to him the louder he laughed, it wasn't a maniacal laugh, but it set off all the alarms in my head nevertheless. He also wasn't wearing any shoes and looked well groomed slash cleaned. I gave him a friendly nod as I passed and he just kept laughing. Then it stopped. I turned and he was gone. There was no branch cracking, plants rustling, nothing. He was just gone. Still rubs me the wrong way. The area I was in was a pretty rough hike, very secluded. Not very many people venture as deep as I was that day. No idea what was going on there. I live in South Spain, near some really ancient forest called Los Alcornocales, which has some kind of trees that are almost extinct and only grow here and in another two or so places. It's a bit of a rocky terrain, and if you ever are walking on the forest and try to climb some rocks, you should be really careful, because usually you can have caves and hollow spaces under your feet and you can fall easily. So, my father and his friends usually go hiking on Thursdays so they don't find anyone on the woods, besides maybe a shepherd or a forest worker, and on this day they decided to climb a really large and rocky hill. My uncle Frank remembered that when he was young he slept on a little cave when he went hunting and got lost, and he wanted to try to find that cave. After a few hours, they find the cave. It was covered in moss and grime but it was surely the same cave. One of my father's friend, John, tried to get as far as possible into the cave, because he was in a really good shape and wanted to see all of it. The rest of them waited outside. Suddenly, John started screaming and calling for my father. He went inside and turned on his torch. Inside of the cave was a really weird shrine or something like that, with candles, two apples, bones, pieces of coal and ashes on the ground, a pair of gloves, a pot and a pan, etc. Everything looked really old and dusty and it was clear it hadn't been touched in a long time. My father went to the shrine and it had a little bowl, and when he looked inside, there was something that looked like human teeth. When they got out, they packed up all their things and got out of there really fast. My father refuses to hike around there anymore, and they started hiking on the other side of the hill and into the woods. All of this was really strange, and I've never heard of something like this before. I don't know anything about voodoo or this kind of things, but my father said it looked like some voodoo shrine or some stuff like that. I was out hunting with my older brother and his best friend a few years back, want to say 2016. We had been walking along a trail for a good 5 kms at least. On one side of this trail is a decent drop and then a river and on the other side is a decent uphill section and a huge pine forest. It was about 1 am by this point and we were just sort of quietly talking to each other when a horrific noise split the air. 
We all froze and looked at each other with the expression on our faces doing all the work. What the fuck was that? We knew it came from up in the pine forest and where we are there aren't any big predators or really anything out there that we should be scared of. So we shouldered our rifles and headed up to find out exactly what made this sound. I wish we hadn't. We got to a clearing and the trees were thinning out and my brother flicked on his spotlight. Big bright fucker, excellent range. Way up ahead of us was the strangest looking figure I've seen. Like the general shape of a wolf but just. Uff. It was just stopped on the edge of another tree line further up the hill looking right at us. Pacing side to side. My brother's friend and I had our rifles trained on it trying to get a good look. We couldn't count out the fact it was another hunter's dog that was lost so we, against my gut feeling, went up after it. As we went up after it it became increasingly obvious this thing was watching us very intently. The closer we got, more we realized this was definitely not a hunter's dog. It was big really big and just the way it moved and its entire demeanor was just so unsettling. We kept two rifles on it and one the opposite direction, slowly made our way back down and haven't been back there since. Don't really talk about it either as we still don't know what we saw and people usually jump to the bullshit conclusion because like I said before where we live there's not really any big predators. I used to work as a fire spotter in a remote tower deep in the woods, on any given day I would be the only human being for miles around. For a couple of weeks every time it approached sunset when I'd finish for the day, everything would go eerily quiet, almost like clockwork, it stood out as it wasn't normal, there's usually more noise around that time of day, along with this every time I left the cabin to climb down there was the unnerving feeling of being watched, but for a while it was only while climbing down. After that I started getting the same feeling while on the ground, and it somehow felt much closer and more menacing, can only liken it to knowing you're being hunted slash stalked. Not overly great when it's a 100 meter walk back to the car with nothing to put between you and whatever else might have been out there. This continued on for another few weeks, but started hearing sort of chirps and calls, they stood out as everything was dead quiet, then one day walking back across the clearing to the car there was a long, low guttural growling somewhere behind me, and I noped the fuck out as fast as I could, and afterwards started parking the car at the base of the ladder, because fuck walking on open ground with angry sounding probably bitey things lurking about. A few days later I was driving back out and spotted a movement on the upside of the road, looked again as it disappeared into the tree line, large, long and dark, it seemed to hang around until the end of the fire season as the quietness and eerie feelings were gone at the start of the next. We live in a farm along a small feeder creek. In our area row crops, corn and soybeans, are the main crops so most land is cleared except along the creeks and rivers. This concentrates the wildlife. For 20 years foxes have made a den under our barn and some generations are tamer and nosier than others. Two summers ago they were so loud, making every scream and weird sound you can imagine we couldn't sleep with the windows open. We also have large numbers of barred owls, I got to see a batch learn to fly as both parents stood by, and these birds have an amazing vocabulary. When our young grandchildren visit in the summer months we usually put a tent in our backyard and my husband and I, camp, up there with them. The sounds you can hear on a night like that are truly amazing. One year we had foxes running past the tent about every 20 minutes making their weird strangled cry. When they got back to the den we'd hear growls, nips, barks, yelps and all manner of noise as the young ones played and fought. The barred owls do the who cooks for you who cooks for you all, call often during the day. But at certain times of the year groups of them start in at dusk with what I call, monkey calls. It's quite chilling the first time you hear it. I can't describe it just imagine a bunch of monkeys doing their typical monkey chatter in you have it. Screech owls, especially if near your home, and I once had one perch on my chimney, are another level and sound like the devil is screaming. All this said I've heard a scream 25 years ago in South Missouri that had to come from such a large chest it truly frightened and confused me. My husband also heard it and to this day has no idea what it was. We were camping at Merrimack State Park. It was deep and long and induced terror in your heart. Whatever it was it was above the campground close to the river. We both sat straight up in our sleeping bags looking at each other and said, WTF was that? I was raised in those hills, never heard it before or since. This happened one or two years ago to me and my stepdad. We were in Colorado on a elk hunting trip and we had been hiking all day when we got to a place that we would make camp. We are there for a few hours and noting really happens we scout a little and don't come up with much, this was our second ever elk hunt so we did really know what to look for. We cooked a dinner of mountain house freeze-dried beef stew, on our gas stove. After we finish up we both sit and catch our breath you see me and my stepdad are from Texas and at 11,000 feet our lungs aren't holding up to the thinner air, we sit there for a while and break out our bevies, not 100% on the spelling of that, 
which is basically a thicker trash bag made or reflective material and is waterproof. We shove our sleeping bags in and settle in, we were both pretty tired but we were slightly worried about bears because I have bear spray, my dad has his 9mm Glock and my dad's bow which is attached to his bag. We have our food bag and a tree out of reach of a bear so we have done all the things we need to make our camp bear proof. We fall asleep and I have theses weird, dup dreams. I hear people talking about how they hope it doesn't rain, then I hear them talking about the best way to put a fire together, and finally I just hear a fire going. I wake up to the feeling of a fat raindrop hitting me in the face. I then feel where the raindrop had hit me and it was dry, I look around and there is no fire and not evidence of any people, no nothing really. This scared the shit out of me and I sit there for a few hours, waiting for it to get light. When it finally does get light my stepdad starts to wake and I'm sitting there still shivering even though it is only in the high 40s and I'm wrapped in a jacket a sleeping bag and many other layers. He turns to me and says dude we need to leave. I say why? And my dad says I had all sorts of dup dreams. He proceeds to explain to me that in the middle of the night he had heard what he thought was a bear, then what he thought was me screaming in the middle of the night, me getting dragged away, and then finally what he thought was a bear just standing over him and he had not been able to sleep much due to the fact that he thought his son was getting eaten by a bear. I then explained to him what I thought I heard and the rain drop and we both agreed that we should leave and that maybe that the altitude was messing with us. To this day I don't know if it was altitude because I heard those voices and I still remember that conversation vividly. We have dense woods behind my house, and one evening I hear my dog barking up a storm. I ran outside to see what it was, and near our grapevine stood this wolf-like creature that was about the size of a huge bear. I freaked out when it made eye contact with me. It just stood there, about 10 yards away from me, just staring. I grabbed my dog and ran inside to tell my parents. They wrote it off as my imagination since I was about 10 to 12 at the time, but ever since then when I go into the woods it feels like I'm being watched. I'm now 17, and still have the vivid memory of it. My father used to be an avid hunter when he was in his 20s, before family life and all, he's hunted all around the state we live in and does not scare easily. At the time he was working on a farm that is just a couple miles away from where we live now. The farmer knew my grandparents and trusted my father. The farmer owned a ton of land, which included quite a bit of woods. He told my dad he could hunt them whenever he wanted. My father didn't waste any time in doing so. He went hunting a few weeks later, but something was off. He told us that when he went into the woods there wasn't any noise, no bugs or tree frogs. It creeped him out, but he just played it off as an off day. He didn't any deer that day and left after a couple hours. My father went back the second time a few weeks later since he finally had a day off from the farm. This time was a bit stranger. He got a 100 or so yards into the woods and it was the same as before, no noise of any sort. Except this time he said it felt as he was being stalked. He said he stayed in the woods for 15 to 20 minutes before quickly leaving. My dad never went back into those woods. He said in his entire life up until now he never felt like that again. This farmer was going to give his farm to my dad, but he refused because of how uneasy those woods made him feel. This happened back in the 70s and the woods currently have a reputation of being haunted with Bigfoot sightings and even screams at night. There's a website for my state that lists forgotten and historical places and has a section that shows legends and haunted places by county and the woods are listed there as a supposedly haunted location. Hiking part of the NCT north of Grand Rapids, Michigan. We hiked around 25 miles in a day and by the time we made camp I was in a huge amount of pain, hadn't hiked for almost a year so going that hard was a mistake. I was starting to get sick and couldn't get warm no matter how I layered up. I barely ate and then went to sleep. I woke up in the very early morning to slow footsteps walking around camp. They were pretty heavy and lumbering so I knew it was a bear. I didn't dare move and tried to slow my breathing as much as possible to stay quiet. After around 20 minutes it started moving away again and I passed back out. When I woke up the shrubbery around camp was disturbed and a friend had also woken up and heard the same thing. She was somewhat new to hiking though and had no idea what it was so she was a little spooked when I told her. We got out of there as soon as we could. Not scary but can't explain it to this day and I've wanted to share it for a while and have no one that I think would take it seriously. Wildland firefighter in the US. I've fought fires all over the Northwest, Eastern Rockies, and Midwest forests and the only thing that's ever thrown me off was fighting fires in the mountains of Nee Wyoming, BLM land east of Yellowstone. Hiking into a recently burnt valley that was, just, eerie, smoke can make that a norm but the colors were so vibrant, even after being touched by fire, most of the trees and shrubs were unburnt, uncommon but not rare or impossible. Within a few steps of entering the base of the valley I knew the details like I had lived there all my life. 
like deja vu, but with the clarity of reality and not a momentary second but 20 minutes and 100 yards of hiking. To be clear this was a place I'd never been before and I was hiking paths that were as familiar to me as a brother. Trees I knew had scars opposite of me 20 yards away. Stones that I knew were going to be warm, almost hot to the touch, perched inches from an ice-cold stream. Before I turned corners I knew about a rock shelf that was protecting a small pool with a lush green patch of grass the size of a small room with small untouched trees, green grass in Wyoming in August, fairly uncommon, I stayed there for a moment that felt like an hour. The whole time my hairs were standing up and falling down like I was revisiting a favorite song and the symphony of emotions like nostalgia, joy and bliss just washing over me. Everything just felt perfect. Every. Single. Detail, perfect. I put Star Trek fans out there basically how Gwyna described the Nexus in Star Trek 7, Generations. Like being inside joy, and never in my entire life have I ever been as content. Finished scouting the valley, went back to my crew and we moved on. I kept it to myself not knowing how to explain this perfect place to anyone let alone myself. This shook me for days, I had no way to rationalize it and it kept me awake a few nights for the rest of that assignment. Even as we worked, ate, shared fun stories it still not at me. To this day, four years and countless fires fought later, I've never had an experience like it and likely the only place I've desired beyond any to return to again just to touch that perfect world. As a kid, I lived by a decent-sized conservation area in southern New Hampshire. Me and my friend from the neighboring town would go there during hunting season, because you weren't allowed to hunt on it, unlike the forest he and I usually hung around. The area spanned a river and there were a lot of little islands and sandbars that only appeared during parts of the year thanks to snowmelt. So we ford the river and ended up on a peninsula not that far off the trail, maybe a quarter mile at most, but across water. You'd have to swim to it most of the year. So we're checking it out, climbing the embankment and what have you, and then we both spot a camp at the same time. It was set up in the middle of this peninsula, just hidden well enough that you couldn't see it if you went boating. The damn thing had bones all over. It looked like your typical homeless camp, with some garbage, a shopping cart of all things, and a tarp tent with a really grimy pile of blankets, but what stuck out was the bones. Hanging from branches on strings, strewn around a fire pit, just generally littered about. I'm pretty sure they were deer and other animal bones, but I don't know because once we both saw that, my friend wasn't listening to my dumbass self who wanted to check it out anymore and fucked right off, and I followed. Never saw a person, never saw a boat, nothing. Just the camp and the bones. It's worth noting that the enforcement of conservation there is strict enough that you can get in major trouble if they even suspect you're there to hunt or fish without permission, and they're really vigilant about it. We also later realized that you could lay on the embankment we climbed up and watch people on the more popular trails without even needing binoculars, and there was a pretty good view of the river as well. Whoever lived there could watch people and not get seen. Friend and I agree, his gut instincts were right. It's very probable the camp's owner was there, watching us from hiding. I shudder to think what would have happened if we got closer. Me and a group of friends were camping in a clearing just outside a large woods, we got there around noon and fished and hiked until sunset. Everything was normal, we made a fire and were cooking our fish and telling stories and once it got so dark you couldn't see past the light of the fire things got a bit scarier. We heard the very loud yelp, we thought it sounded like a wolf, so we decided to throw whatever fish we had left back into the creek to try to get the wolf to leave. We still on high alert but we sat back down and continued our stories, a bit later we hear the yelp again followed by a loud screeching noise, I've never heard anything like it before. After that we put more wood on the fire and went back to our tents, we hoped the light would keep whatever was in that woods away. In the morning we started to pack up and notice some of the fish that we threw in the creek was laying next to our fire, I have no idea what did that but we decided it was best if we didn't come back to that spot anymore. I've got one. When I was in Boy Scouts, My troop would always go to a camp called Camp to Keats for our yearly summer camp. That specific year, they had had abnormal bear activity in and around the camp. It was a pretty sizable camp, but was still way out in the boonies, so an encounter with a chipmunk was just as common as it would be with a California black bear. Wildlife management was done by some crazy old gunnery sergeant that we called Gunny, so you can see the situations you might find yourself in. So anyway, I was tending with my friend who had just joined the troop, let's call him James. So James and I are sleeping in our tent in the middle of the night, probably around 1 or 2 in the morning, when I was abruptly awoken by something. Everything is dead silent, aside from a plasticky creaking sound. Then I see it, right above my head. Something was pushing the tent in so hard that it began to cave in right above my head, like if someone was leaning into it with all of their weight. Except, 
these tents were relatively strong, you, I mean, I could as a preteen, could jump on them and you would just bounce right off. So, being the scared little 13 year old that I was, I began to smack whatever it was with all of my might whilst simultaneously clubbing James with my fist to get him to wake up. Mind you, James is an incredibly deep sleeper so this in effect is nothing. Whoever or whatever it is is leaning so hard that it is almost touching my head when James wakes up from the nightmare that he was having and let out a blood-curdling 10-year-old girl being murdered in the woods type scream. Whatever it was stopped leaning on the tent and vanished silently into the night. So, for a few years, James, who has no recollection of the event whatsoever, and I always assumed it was a bear after the meds in my day pack. But, after staffing at the camp and getting to know the lore of the grounds a little better, I think something else might have been afoot. There have been many strange happenings in and around Camp Tekeats, both paranormal and just normally unexplained. There's the usual Bigfoot and ghost stories, but older scouts and even administrative higher-ups claim to have seen things. Claims of Wendigo skinwalker hybrids, things that look like both, not actual hybrids, some dead guy called Dragthump, and a bunch of Native American myths, Tekeats has the biggest and most active Native American program west of Oklahoma. The fact that there were no tears in the tent flap from the bear claws, we were the furthest away from the bear box, the fact that there was absolutely no sound from the supposed bear, black bears make a heck of a ruckus, and the fact that it was just persistently leaning into the tent instead of just clawing at it like most bears leads me to believe that it was no yogi or smoky. It just didn't behave like bears do, and even if it was some older scouts attempting to play a joke on us, they wouldn't have been heavy enough to lean that far in on the tent and probably would have erupted into laughter right afterward. Plus, my troop isn't like that. It's full of a bunch of mild-mannered city boys, perfect Eagle Scout material, of which I am one. Everything just seems so off. I don't claim to know what it was, hence the unexplained part. Let me guys know if something similar happened to you. A couple years ago while hunting I went out before first light and climbed into my deer stand like I've done countless times. Right at about 5 am. My favorite part of the day is when the light starts to break into the sky and the forest wakes up. The nocturnal creatures retreat and the day creatures stir and become active. That morning, as the light started to appear, nothing happened. And I mean nothing. No rabbits or raccoons retreating to a den, no squirrels searching for breakfast, no deer, no hogs, not even a single bird. The weather slash temperature was unremarkable and the air was mostly still. There was just no movement and no sound throughout the woods that morning. Not a chirp nor a rustle. As time passed I started to get an unexplainable sense of dread. Not a this is weird feeling of observing something strange but more of a death is imminent feeling that I've never experienced before. I stayed until about 8 am, still early for deer hunting, until I was literally trembling with fear and I stormed out of there. I went back that afternoon and I found the woods to be completely normal with all the usual sights and sounds. Weirdest and most uncomfortable experience in the woods that I've ever had. Almost like a dream but I absolutely was not dreaming. I have not been scared in the woods since I was a boy going out the first few times with my dad. He would joke, we're hunting. We have nothing to fear. The forest is afraid of us. Not that morning, dad. I was scared shitless and I don't know why. I was 45 years old at the time. I was camping with my church youth group when I was about 12 to 13, I'm 23 now. At night we would split up into three or four and tent together. First night there, I could not sleep. My tent mates were heavy asleep, but for some unexplainable reason, I had a really uneasy feeling that kept me awake. I passed most of my time just laying and looking through our mesh window in the tent. There was only one window that faced the gravel road and about 15 yards down the road was the camp's restroom. Next to the restroom, was one single street light. This is all I could see through our window. Nothing but woods around the tent other than that. Early, around 1 or 2 am, a dull, hovering light caught my attention. At first I thought it was a headlamp because that seemed around the same height that I was seeing this light. The light slowly moved from the restroom area to directly underneath the street light. That's when I realized that no human was holding the light. The orb of light continued to slowly move, and I followed it with my eyes until it reached the tree line and disappeared behind the trees. I believe no one else had seen it until I told my younger brother the next morning, also happened to be on that trip. He said that he was awake all night and had seen the exact same thing. I distance hike when I can. Sometimes this means getting up early, or staying out late, to get as many miles in as possible. Sometimes, walking in the pitch dark with a low light headlamp gets spooky. I grew up in the woods of this area. I've slept under our canopy of stars more nights than I can count. I've trekked thousands of miles of trail, river bank, lake shore, ridge, bottoms, bogs, and creeks. I've hunted the game. 
I'm establishing this because it's important you understand I've heard, seen, and smelt about all this region has to offer in the way of wilderness. My scariest experience though happened at about 0430 in the morning. It was late spring, so the first morning light wouldn't be visible in the treetops for another 30 to 45 minutes, another hour past that until sunrise. I was on mile 5. I'm in a low bottom that's wedged between two steep ridges. The trail I'm on was narrow, muddy, and completely hemmed in by thick underbrush, young maple, and old oak growth. I'm focused on the small light from my headlamp, just one step after the other, zoned out. Then I heard a loud crack. And I froze solid. This is the part I have trouble describing. 0430 in springtime means I'm the only thing making noise. No birds chirping, nothing. Dead quiet. Midstep I froze. When fight or flight kicks in you have these immediate instinct thoughts. The thought that instantly flashed in my mind as I stood there balancing myself into silence was, if I hear that again, I'm turning around, and I'm going back the way I came in a hurry. Why? Because that sound was not a branch breaking. It wasn't deadfall. It wasn't a widow maker. I was damn sure I had just heard something intentional. Hearing it twice, well, that meant get out of here. To describe it as best I can, it sounded like a decent-sized wooden stick being violently whacked against a smallish tree. More a fungo bat-sized stick, than a baseball bat. The distinction in my head being that this sound was a crack, and not a thud or thump. And I have described it as, explosive, in the past because it was so sudden, and so terribly loud. I had the sense that it was about 50 yards directly in front of me, and it was loud, and clear. Now, as I stood there, completely spooked, I realized the soon-to-be worst part of my situation. I knew where the sound came from. And I knew where the trail went. In about 30 yards, I was going to come to a 180 degree turn and start up the ridge going away from the creek. This meant, as soon as I got the courage to move towards this noise, I was going to have to turn my back to it and get up that ridge. This made me very nervous. My head somewhere between meth fiend murder and Bigfoot bludgeoning. Minutes pass. I just breathe my foggy breath into my glasses and listen. Nothing. Dead quiet. I've got about 20 to 30 minutes until first light. I crank up the headlamp and start to slowly creep to the 180 turn. When you wear a headlamp in the woods at night, every tree branch in front of you casts a big black moving shadow on the trail. It didn't help. I get to the turn, and quickly make the bend. I'm moving pretty fast at this point. Trying to be quiet. Taking tiny, shallow breaths so I can listen while humping it up the trail. And then I smell it. A stench hits me that I can't describe. I just imagined wet, rotten, death. I've actually worked scenes where humans have expired in a past life as a firefighter. This was like days old decomposition, but it just smelled strange. I kept walking fast. By the time I made the top of that ridge, I was huffing, and the first light was showing. I didn't stop moving until full light was out, and the birds were chirping. I've heard it all in our woods. I've smelled it all. I'm telling you, I don't know what the hell that was. Deadfall, and especially leafed out branches, make a lot of noise on the way down. I've heard it many times. I don't know. I was up at Montezuma's castle, Montezuma's well, and Tuzi Gudinaz for an internship with the MPS. Most of the job was trail maintenance and destroying of invasive plants. So lots of time outside pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Many a time when I'd be out of here what sounded like hoofbeats of horses but never saw any. The hoofbeats would get really close, within a few feet and there were times I could feel the vibration. One day I was out with one of the rangers and I started hearing it. I asked him if he heard it and he said he did and that it happened a lot. I started to ask questions when he held up his hand and told me to just accept that it was happening and to not ask questions. He seemed frightened of the sound too. I've heard it at home too in Phoenix. At my apartment complex there is a nice green belt area and one morning I was on the early shift for work, it's pitch black outside. I was walking to my car when I heard the hoof beats. It sounded like a horse charging at me. I whipped around expecting a giant dog that was running across the green belt but there was nothing. The hoof beats continued until they got to where I was and just stopped. I have never found anything on the internet about it, much to my dismay. I don't know that I would really call it paranormal. But I definitely can't find an explanation. The only two things I can think of is one, the ground moving and it causes the hoof beat sounds. Two, gas escaping from underground. I'll probably never know. Went for a drive in the woods in southeast Alaska a few decades ago. It was my best friend driving, my fiancé riding center seat, and me in the passenger seat of a single cab pickup. We stopped at a gas station to get snacks before heading out. 
It was late in the evening so it was already dark out by the time we stopped to eat some of our snacks. The night was cool as it was late fall. So here we are chatting in the truck and eating our food parked off of this long winding dirt road to nowhere. My buddy starts taking about local legends and lore including the Kushtaka. I was fairly ignorant to the idea and myth and thought it was all BS. I thought it would be funny to harass him a bit about it and push the limits of testing this Kushtaka nonsense. He was dead serious when he told me to stop. But I continued. Then I heard what sounded exactly like fingernails tapping on my window next to my head. I looked over and seen nothing but assumed I was hearing things. I couldn't see anything because the cab light was on it was pitch black out. A few moments pass and I hear it again. This time both my finance and friend heard it. My friend sorta of nervously smiled and laughed. Then I realized I had to pee. So I jokingly tell them if I get snatched up by this kush taka you best come after me. I open the door and pee by the front passenger tire. But the area felt very weird and uncomfortable. I mentioned that as I got back in. There we talked a bit more and I realized we had pulled off unknowingly, at the time we stopped, near a very old small cemetery that contained frog-type headstones of the Tlingit and Haida culture in an area amongst large southeast evergreen trees. I still not being a believer and love flipping shit to my friend then started yeah well if this Kush Taka BS is real why don't they make themselves known? Come on. Come on already. No sooner had I said that than something punched or hit the front fender twice. My buddy turned ghost white and in one motion started the truck up and threw it in drive and we were fucking gone. We got off the dirt road and back onto asphalt really quickly and stopped under a street light. We got out and looked. Sure enough, you could clearly see where something had hit, up high, the front right fender when we were parked. Two distinct marks of dirt missing. To this day, I still don't know what it was, but with every other paranormal experience I've had since that time, there's no doubt in my mind that something was trying to tell me to stop pushing it or something bad would happen. Never again did I talk shit about the Kush Taka being BS. And I'll never go into the woods of Southeast alone, ever. One time on a hunting trip we were in a tree stand when across the clearing we see someone standing just in the middle of the field we grabbed a scope to see what they were doing my buddy looked at me and said it was a kid we were in shock that a kid would be out in the middle of. The Montana woods in winter so we climbed down and started heading towards him. Well as soon as we got about 100 yards away the kid giggled and took off running the other way I yelled and started sprinting towards my bud right behind me but no matter how fast we ran we couldn't catch him when we started getting into thick bush we lost track of him and couldn't find a trace of him all we kept hearing was his childlike giggle. That's when my buddy just turned and said we should go something ain't right. We got back to the tree stand and never saw him again. We stopped off in prey and asked some people if any kids were missing cause we saw a little boy in the woods but he ran from us. They said no one was missing from there. It was the closet town to us so who knows. I was maybe 16 at the time and was out deer hunting. I was a mile walk from home hunting in a valley and sitting on the top of a ridge on the one side overlooking a river bed and the sun was going down. I should have left earlier but didn't want to scare the deer and figured I'd wait till they left or it was dark enough they wouldn't see me leave. When I did leave it was still light enough to somewhat see but too dark to look through my rifle scope if that makes sense. I climbed over the top of the ridge and when I did I could hear something across the dried up pond at the bottom of this side. I then seen five animals. Don't know what they were they were but they weren't canines like wolves or coyotes. They were bigger than coyotes and a lot more bulky but were super agile. They were making weird sounds I'd never heard before too. I don't know if they seen or smell but all of a sudden they all stopped moving and went silent for a few seconds before two of them took off running and started looping around to my left and going behind me and one looped to my right while the other two stayed where they were. I had become the hunted and I was terrified. I started shouting and making a lot of noise and I never seen them for the rest of the walk home but it was the scariest moment I've ever had in the woods. We went back the next day to look for tracks but it had snowed enough that night to cover them. I won't forget that night. When my best friend and I were in middle school, we would often walk our dogs on this wooded trail that was located near our houses. We would occasionally run into wildlife out there like deer or fox, but the dogs, golden retriever and German shepherd, would just bark and chase them for a second, then we would round them up and be on our way. This day when we were walking it was late in the evening and the sun was getting ready to set, and we didn't see anybody else out in the woods. We let the dogs off the leash and they were running around having a good time. The dogs were about 30 feet in front of us sniffing slash playing and just being dogs, when suddenly they both stopped almost simultaneously in the middle of the path, looked up in the sky, not too many trees in this spot, started barking, and backing up cautiously with their hackers up. We tried looking to see if there was something in the sky but didn't see anything, so my friend and I looked at each other, then turned around and ran home. 
No idea what caused them to do this, maybe a random high frequency we couldn't hear. We did live near a military base that does a lot of testing. Not mine, but my mom's and cousin. My mom swears there is a werewolf creature around the Camp Douglas slash Fort McCoy area of Wisconsin. In the late 90s, mom and boyfriend were driving on the frontage road alongside the interstate between Toma and Sparta. It was a full moon night in the fall. I call it a frontage road but it's sometimes visible to the interstate and other times not because of trees. What they think is an exceptionally large man runs out of the trees on all fours and leaps over the chain link and barbed wire fence around some military area. This fenced in area has a stone entrance wall with a sign stating what it's for and the army installation it belongs to. The thing has ears you like a human, more like a dog and leaps over the chain link barbed wire fence and disappears into more woods. They don't stop, but freak out asking the others in the car if they saw whatever it was. About five years later, my dad's cousin, didn't know my mom, broken family reasons, is talking to me about how he and his GF were on that frontage road driving out to look at a home they wanted to buy. It was dusk in winter. They come close to this stone entrance thing, and something is on top of it. They slowed and looked at it. They said it was a werewolf sitting on its haunches on the stone wall, and it looks right at them. Its ears move back like a dog's do when it's thinking about taking off after something. His wife screams and he floors it away. They never stopped to see the house, just made it back onto the interstate. What gets me is the two sightings happened years apart, and at least six total adults saw it. Some of them I think would just love to say they saw something like this, but not all of them are this fanciful. Nevertheless, when I had to go to Fort McCoy to get my CAC and the group of us from my employer got lost on the way in this wooded area, I couldn't help but look into the woods just in case I saw it. Hunting alone in the middle of the Oregon Cascades, miles from any people. I'm sitting still watching a clearing when I hear a sound that I've never heard before or since. Only way I can describe it is that it sounded like wood cracking together, like someone hit a pine tree with a telephone pole and was doing their best Jose Canseco impression. The first time it happened I genuinely thought it was a gunshot because the initial crack was so loud but the last half of the sound was very clearly a tree being struck and shaking. There was a flood of instant terror once my mind worked out the calculation for how hard you would have to hit a tree to replicate that sound. I'd estimate the source was on the other side of a small valley for me well over 300 yards. I know it sounds stupid but it was such a tremendous show of force I instantly started making my way back to my truck. I've been hunting all my life and I'm an avid firearm enthusiast I go shooting almost every weekend. This was 100% not gunfire. Pine trees and cedar trees will also sometimes make poping sound in the morning and into the afternoon as the sun warms them. It was orders of magnitude louder than that. So I live in quite a remote area and I never really believed in ghosts or monsters. I was driving along at night and decided to pull up for the night and continue driving the next day at a spot known as the Flat Sands. It's literally just a flat land that spans for 100s of kilometers. I was sleeping and I woke up to the most intense feeling of someone pinning me down and unable to move. I couldn't see anything but it lasted a good minute. I was sweating and out of breath and had to take a moment to process WTF just happened. I ended up going back to sleep and drove home the next day. Fast forward a few weeks later in my own home the same shit happened. Later on I was chatting to a few locals and another fella who had stayed at the same sand flat started talking about how he refuses to sleep there anymore as he has been there twice and both times he's had the same experience. On top of that the local inmates at the prison I'm at started to make complaints that they believe the feather foot man is about as they all experienced being pushed down in their sleep. It's some wacky shit. I was about 16 when this happened. I was in Brawley, California for dove season with my cousins, dad and grandpa. I was sitting at our campfire with my cousins when I kept hearing scratching noises and shuffling coming from a nearby cluster of trees. I told my cousins to stay put and I took my shotgun to investigate, thinking it was coyotes and I'll just shoo them away. Well, I approached the trees and I noticed there was some kind of creature? Or person? Standing behind one of the trees, but I only could see half of its face peeking at me. I let out a who's there? And the one thing turned into six things, all peeking from behind the trees at me. I panicked started to fall backward and shot off around towards the trees. I stood up and looked back at the trees and noticed the things were gone. I walked over to the trees, gun still pointed. I saw the tree that I shot, with a small pool of fresh blood next to it. I immediately found the blood trail and it led to the irrigation canal that was adjacent to the trees. Well, I also noticed that the blood trail continued on the other side of the canal, which was 15 feet across. There were no footprints or anything. So whatever this was had to jump around 15 feet to get to the other side, it couldn't have walked around the canal, it went on for over a mile. I never told anyone about what I saw. 
I just told my cousins that I scared off some coyotes. Every year when I went back to that area for dove season, I always wondered if those things were gonna come back for revenge. So I live in the Pacific Northwest, I spend most of my time outside. Usually I hang around what me and my friends call, the island it's in the middle of a river, and can be traveled to when summer rolls around and the water goes down. One day I was out on the island, and I was hearing some strange noises, I knew it wasn't a deer because you get to know the noises animals make after a while. I was getting pretty freaked out by the fact that it was moving around me like a predator would. When you spend a lot of time in the woods you learn when an apex predator is on the hunt, they seem to control every aspect of nature, the wind stops blowing, trees stop creaking, and time stops. This began to happen when the creature was moving around me. Something felt wrong about this creature, I had heard stories of Nez Perce legends, and never really took them to heart until I began to spend time outside. There are things you experience out in the woods that can't, or shouldn't be understood. A lot of Nez Perce tried to explain those things. When I looked around me I couldn't see a thing but trees and brush, but I could hear the movement of something around me. When you know something it's superior in strength it's a law of nature to treat it with respect, so I began to walk away from the area. When I left the sound followed, this is never a good thing, it means that you are the object of their hunt. I began to fiddle with my pocket knife even though I knew it would do anything against a predator that would want to hunt a human. At this point it was getting dark and I was moving faster, that's when I heard it, the screech. Now there's no way I could explain it it just was wrong, I started running and anyone who knows anything about wildlife knows that you never run. I don't know what would have happened if I didn't make it to my little rowboat. I would rather not know. Me and my best friend were going hunting, for the fifth time I think together. We're we're in our 18th hour in and is like 10 or 11 pm and we had hunted about 14 deer, and we're going to an open field with few trees. So halfway there I start seeing dead deer that were just lying on the ground so luckily I decided to take my 12 gauge with me in case animals attack me. The first deer I saw had its body cut at half but when we inspected there were no organs slash flesh were inside, so we thought they were wolves or foxes that had killed it. So we stayed very alert. Next thing I walked not even 500 feet from that I start seeing more and more dead deer. We originally thought it was wolves or foxes, but then here's where thing got crazy. I see deer with the body cut open like a rug or something and covered in blood. Next thing, I saw a deer with its head open and half of the brain was out and skull fragments were around. Now we though it was hunters that forgot their hunt. But when we go further, we start seeing deer in unimaginable poses slash places. They were on top of, not too high, around 10 feet, branches, so we turn back. We hear a stampede and decide to do a quick hunt. I just see a dark figure moving very quick and hunting them quickly. Now, when we shot it, my friend said the shot was hit, he had the better thermal scope, but still no effect, so when we shoot it again, it turns, starts moving to us, I get my shotgun, and shoot it then it disappears. I got scared so we saw the deer and same thing. Missing brains, organs. So we decided to immediately turn back. I never forgot this. Scared the shit out of me. I don't work in the forest or anything but my mom and I grew up in a very very small Acadian community in rural New Brunswick, Canada outside of Moncton the settlement is Notre Dame, that was mostly woods. Anyway. If you didn't know, cougar slash puma slash mountain lions aka eastern cougar are extinct in my area of eastern Canada, but, many people in my community could beg to differ. Most of these are not my experiences but they're all true. Anyway, first was my mom. When she was a teenager she was getting out the car and going to the house at night, when she heard an extremely loud cat roar slash growl slash sound. It was much louder than any bobcat, lynx, cat, so on and she saw a very large black cat shape move in the dark. This was probably in the 80s or 90s. Next is my aunt. She lived about 5 minutes away. Her house was very wooded. Anyway, she has seen a tan cougar, larger than any other feline in the Maritimes. When she went out, she found the paw prints and took a picture. They were not bear, lynx, bobcat, none of that shit. 100% cougar. She saw it again a second time. This was within my lifetime, I am 17 born in 2002. I was around 10. Third was my next door neighbor. It was dusk and she was outside, and she saw across the road, there is a vastly wooded area with an extremely steep hill that leads to the river. Along the road she saw a black panther. Not a bear or anything. Definitely that. She had seen it twice or so. This was within my lifetime as well I probably was a baby when it happened though. Last that I know of was my cousin. My parents, brother, cousins, uncles and I all lived with my nan at one point and while it was just my uncle, cousins and nan, my little cousin who was around 12 was outside, 
taking her chihuahua to do her business and she heard the same growl my mom did, like the cougars you hear in movies and she saw a tan cougar in the long grass behind our house. She freaked out and ran inside. My experience was I was playing around the river and found large animal bones and extremely cat-like paw prints in the sand and dirt along the river. Another of mine was my friend and I got in the woods connected to the trail, either right before winter or right after. We heard those big cat growls and saw tan body in the bushes. We then ended up in a neighbor's yard in the next town over, St. Antoine after we made it out of the dense and large woods. The craziest part? My nan had a news article from back in the day, that a circus train crashed in the area and there were animals on it. Wanna know which ones? Cougars. I think a black one and a tan one. Majority of the animals, especially the cougars, were survivors and were never searched for as it was most likely too much of a hassle. My theory is the black cougar that escaped perhaps bred with any cougars in the area. The last sighting I heard was my cousins. That's the end.